on the drill and you're going thousands of feet horizontally, it's pretty, pretty easy to do under somebody else's property. Well, even if you do it, then who knows if the gas is exclusively coming after the equipment? You know, it could be. I mean, the surface owner isn't going to know what's going on seven yeah. thousand feet down. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think over here. Isn't that crap, Larson? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just be on my hands. No, I don't know. Could be. Seems to me that uh, you have an argument. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you make the argument that these extraction energy companies, uh, there, there's enough examples of horrendous unforeseen catastrophes, like, for example, what happened in Japan. And that was in the proposal state. If somebody had said, oh, we had an earthquake and a tsunami and a nuclear, everybody would just laugh that you're, you're a nut. But, you know, we can think of a scenario like that. Or what happened in the Gulf of Mexico was a terrible oil. So these things do happen, like the gentleman up front pointed out about the caves and stuff here. I mean, it could fill up gas, explosion, all the words this way. And then all these arguments, everybody just walks away. It's, it, the people that live there are out of luck. The taxpayers from all over have to come in and pick up the tab for these inadequate cleanups. Uh, aren't there enough examples of that kind of stuff happening? You can make an argument that it's just, the, the guarantees are basically worthless from in, in those kind of situations, and those kind of situations do occur. Uh, all that is, and I think, a fair description of what's happening over and over, Love Canal, and, uh, um, yeah, um, but part of nuisance analysis is what's the likelihood that one of these catastrophes can happen, and if it's, if you're talking about one of these, you know, catastrophic events, it's just not very likely, and, and it's, it's hard to invoke the nuisance power on the basis that, gee, it's a catastrophe could happen. It could be a blowout, which, um, you know, sends fracking water sky high and covers up four miles, square miles. Like that. There have been a couple of fracking accidents on um, blowouts. There's one up in Pennsylvania. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I think there, there have been two or three so far. But it, it's, too, it's, it's not enough probability. Yeah. It seems like if you enacted an ordinance, that the worst, some of the worst uh, ramifications for the county, because we're not a wealthy county, and uh, to date, I don't know that we have a super wealthy citizen who has stepped forward, or a group of people who have stepped forward and said, we will personally help bankroll this. And so if you get into, if you enact an ordinance, and then you get into a court case, either because somebody's saying, I need to be compensated for, for my property rights that you took away from me, or um, from the drilling companies, how much money would that cost, and what happens if you run out of money and you just have to say, hey, we gave it our best, this is how much money we had, and we have to stop? We drill a well and get more money. <laughs> <laughs> what? We drill a well and use it to pay for it? <laughs> As of last year, it brought my been between 15 and 17 million dollars already invested in Pope County's County. In the purchase of leases? In the purchase of leases, up front money. Well, I think the, um, if, if you enact a ban and it's invalidated on, it's invalidated on preemption grounds. Um, there, there's no liability. Because in my interpretation of the Local Government Liability Act, uh, if you can't assess damages against a local government body for uh, exercising its legislative power. But what about for like legal but, fees? And but, but, I just don't have any uh, idea. In, 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 in this state, uh, we don't sh shift legal fees. So um, we would not be responsible for the legal fees of anybody who uh, succeeded against you. Well, I take that back. You could get 1983 fees. Uh, there could be uh, fee shifting if it's struck down on federal constitutional grounds. Uh, so, uh, you know, legal fees wouldn't be debilitating or I would think in this kind of case. The, um, and you might have insurance to cover it. Um, the, the, uh, the, if, if the takings argument succeeds and, and, uh, and there's 
said, okay, either your choice is to um, compensate, which means you have to compensate for whatever their <coughs> property losses were, um, or you can repeal the ban. And then your only liability would be the losses from the temporary taking. And <coughs> uh, I, I, that would be hard to prove. It could be. Yeah. Could be. Could be. Um, but one wouldn't expect it. Can the county commission take sides in this type of situation? Take sides? Yeah, I mean, what if the county commission chooses to be against fracking? Can they go to court and defend it and pay for the defense? Could they go to court? If they, go, if they end up in court, somebody sues them, they'll have to be on defense. Right. Uh, can the county commission take a side? And for example, I guess the majority of the commission here today got you to come to speak in regard to fracking. Now, what I'm saying is, if my property interests are on the other side of that issue, can the county commission go to court and use my tax dollars against me in court? Well, Mr. Alderman, I'd say to that that the county commission is a political body, duly elected, and represents uh, as best it can the, the will of the people and uh, makes a decision. And when it makes a decision, it doesn't represent every single person because some people are for and against various <coughs> issues. It does its best to navigate what it considers to be a reasonable solution to complex problems. So that's the way I answer that. Yeah. You, um, the county commission might possibly could sue to join if you're a leaseholder. Um, join you from uh, executing the lease or implementing um, it, it's not as good. It would have to prove that what we were going to do was a public nuisance under judicial nuisance standards and it wouldn't come in with the legislative judgment that fracking is a nuisance. Wouldn't be as good a favorable position. Can you see anything that, that any authority of the county would have to get any money out of this process, either in terms of severance fees, permit fees, licenses, any way that if, if and when it does happen, the county could actually make some money to compensate it for all of the expenses it would have to incur? Um, not unless legislatively authorized. And I'm relatively sure current um, well, I, I'm not sure. Some of the, the coal severance money goes back. Yes, I get coal severance. Yeah. yeah. I don't know where the, the gas severance money goes. But, but the legislature can certainly say that the county of Oregon should get uh, part of that. Which committees are working on the regulations? Uh, both houses have special committees. Okay. Um, I don't know comment on the severance fee aspect. Um, one thing that occurs to me uh, being at the uh, attendance at several county commissioners meetings around the state and being in the company of fellow commissioners all dealing with similar problems is that there are some issues we feel comfortable talking about openly and there are some that we don't. Mm -hmm. When it comes to coal, uh, the county commissioners as a whole group are pretty silent because we're afraid to speak out or come out of the closet, if you will, that uh, we have some problem of any kind with coal. This was not the case at the recent meeting that we were at in Morgantown when Marcellus Shale was talked about, several commissioners, myself included, voiced their concerns with this issue. And this is what prompted me to write a letter uh, from all of us to the County Commissioners Association, excuse me, and to all county commissioners in the state, is that um, each county, I feel, and I wanted to encourage other counties, should have the local right to decide on this issue for themselves. And with respect to severance fees, I perceive that one reason uh, county officials are hesitant to speak out against coal of any kind is because we are, in fact, recipients of severance fees. Uh, our county receives several hundred thousand dollars annually in coal severance fees, and we don't put out any coal at all. I would think that a severance tax on gas, given as an award to every county in the state, whether you're willing or not, would be a hindrance 
to county officials having the courage to speak out on this issue for the benefit of their own county. Mm -hmm. So I see severance fees as a hindrance to local governments. I see it as a way for the state to say, well, we're paying you, mm -hmm. so shut up. Mm -hmm. So I don't like this idea, and I think I have more to say about that to the association in regard to severance fees and legislation to go forward to try to make that happen. That's my point. Could we put it on the ballot? I know at least two county commissioners want it on the ballot, or want to vote on it, want the people to vote on it. Would you? Would it be possible? I am, but then you have a local I'm not sure. I, I, that that would be the issue that the that that is an issue that I just want to again comment on, and it's very hard to judge the uh, number of people for and against this particular subject because there have been a number of people who have leased their property. Whether they did so knowingly and, and, and rationally and have come to regret it or whether they did so and want to have uh, uh, their minerals and gas extracted, that I don't know that, but I know there are an awful lot of leases. So it's very hard as a politician to understand exactly what the balance of power is on this particular issue because I do think the commission needs to, well it needs to have leadership and it needs to educate people, but you know, ultimately this is a county decision. Uh, if everyone in this county said we don't want any leases, we're not leasing, there wouldn't be any and you wouldn't even be here today as much as we appreciate you coming because we wouldn't have an issue. The tension, unfortunately, is not between county residents and gas companies. That's really not the tension. The tension is between county residents and county residents. That's where the tension lies. And that is the difficult thing for me. And the hardest part of all this is to reach a solution in which that tension can somehow be released and, and solved by the people who live here. It's very hard to come to this conclusion. That, that's my biggest problem. Well, why would it not be a benefit at that point to put it on the ballot then? Well, uh, possible. If you was going to make a ban. Well, you have, you have but another... If you're having mixed feelings of who's for it and who's against it, if you put it on the ballot, then everybody's got an equal opportunity at that point. I yeah, that's right. I ran into somebody last night who I feel is a, a, a knowledgeable woman, and I asked her about the meeting today, and she didn't even know what it was. She did, she'd never, she didn't have the interest to even know it. I just want to speak uh, to what you were saying before about the 15 to $17 million, and also to what you were saying about county residents versus county residents, because, you know, with, with our family and and the property and the farmland that's held in that, it was a really hard family decision about whether or not to lease, you know? And we came down barely on the side of we're not gonna lease right now. And a lot of other families went through the same conversation and came down barely on the other side without a lot of the information that we have right now of that. And so I think that it is also really true that there are a lot of people, I know that it's true, that there are a lot of people who leased before we knew everything that we knew right now that wish they could take it back and really wish there were more protections in place, you know? And I don't know if there's a legal way to like go through those leaseholders and to, to talk to them and say, in order to have this ban, until we have a level of protection that as a community we feel comfortable with, including you. I mean, they're more worried about protection than, and it's their land, it's their farm, it's generations, it's their whole life, it's their kids, it's the five acres that their son built a house on. Like, it's all of those people, you know? So is there a way in terms of the 15 to 17 million dollars, if those people, or a majority of those people, or half of those people are willing to say, I would not pursue asking the county to like compensate me for my money, just put up a ban until we have regulations in place to make sure that I'm not gonna lose my service rights, basically. Well, 